we have this whole economy and society where people do not prioritize their physical health and it's a complete blind spot because everyone does it and it's completely normalized. Paul Cech is the godfather of health. Paul Cech. He is the best health uh, maestro I've ever learned from. And he has this stat that he pulls, which is that about 150 to 170 years ago, the average human being slept between 11 and 13 hours per night. I think personally, and I'm just going to nail the high level 20 out of the 80, 20 rule of how to nail your sleep, which is get minimum eight hours sleep starting before 10 30 PM. Okay. That's the, you want to have solid sleep. <clears throat> if you're not getting minimum eight, minimum eight hours and you're going to bed after 10 30, you're not nailing the just like pre preliminary basics. So first and foremost, we need enough sleep. I get nine hours every single night, nine hours of sleep. I used to get six and that was my normalized kind of reality. And then I'd live on adrenaline. I'd be doing all these pump up rituals to like get myself a bit energy, more energy. And then I get tired. When I started meditating in that rhythm six and a half years ago, every single time I meditated, I fell asleep because my body was screaming for rest. And every single day I was amplifying and accumulating more toxicity and I was burning myself out more and more. I was running more and more on adrenaline and normalizing it. And most people do this in society. So you need to get enough sleep. I, I personally find that nine hours, this is the way that you can find it out. Stop waking up with an alarm clock. When do you get up? And you got to do it for an extended period of time. The best time to do this is a holiday. So if you have a holiday of like a week or more or a couple of weeks, don't wake up in a, with an alarm the entire time and see what time you naturally, because initially your body's going to be used to it and wake up kind of like instinctually at the same time because it's in that, even though it's dysfunctional, it's in that pattern. So it's going to keep re re reacting to that pattern. But after a couple of weeks, you see how much sleep you naturally get. That's how much sleep you need. For me, it's about nine hours. I, I slept, I used to aim for eight hours every single night for so many years and would often get less, six, seven. And I've, I, I now have landed on nine is like, I can't sleep more than that. I, I would be happy to if I needed to, because, you know, I'm, I'm not attached to what I need. I'm just happy to give myself what I need. And when I wake up in the morning without an alarm clock, at least nine out of 10 days. I never feel tired. I never feel groggy. I never resent getting out of bed. And that's not because my lifestyle is so awesome and I just do what I love, even though that's a factor. It's just because I'm fully rested. It's fully rested. If I was waking up an hour before I needed or two or three hours before I needed and I had all this built up stress that I hadn't rested off and given myself the rejuvenation I need, so I've got all this like sleep deficit. So sleep debt. If I didn't have all this, like, if I had all this sleep debt and then I woke up an hour, I had eight hours sleep, I'd be waking up feeling groggy, tired. My body would be like, dude, get the hell back to sleep. What are you doing? But to me, alarm clocks are literally the biggest freaking blind spot on the entire planet that exists. Alarm clocks are nonsense. They're ridiculous. They enrage me. Why on earth, how could the population get to a point where 99% of people wake up before their body is ready to wake up? Because that's what an alarm clock does. If you wake up by an alarm clock and it shocks you out of sleep, what's happened? You literally woke up before you were ready to wake up. So your body's not finished recovering. It's crazy. And that's normalized. That's what everyone does. How are we here? How do we get to this point? I think it is freaking ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. Because if you ask any peak performance coach, they will say the most important area to address peak performance and for someone to be at their best and to feel energized is sleep. More important than nutrition, more important than anything else. 
you don't get enough recovery, you're not going to be feeling clear. You're not going to perform at your best the next day. Sleep's the most important aspect for that. So if we're waking up with an alarm and our body hasn't finished doing its thing, of course, we're going to feel groggy and regret, uh, resent getting out of bed and, and start the day on a poor note. It's, it is literally absurd. I do not wake up with an alarm clock. Every now and again, if I something in my routine means that I have to get up a lot earlier than normal and I struggle to get to sleep early enough for me to naturally wake up at that time, I'll put up a backup alarm on. But I, I don't think I've woken up reactive to an alarm clock for probably, I don't know, like 30 or 40 days. Every now and again, I need to use it. But it's very, very rare that I won't wake up right before it when my body's just naturally done resting. And then I wake up alert. You have no problem getting out of bed. I used to. I used to be like, come on, just get up, get out of bed. And it's like, why Why would we need this? And then oh, walking around like a zombie and getting a coffee. It is just stupid. It is stupid. It is not your fault if you do this. It's not your fault. You're not a bad person. You're not an idiot. You're not stupid. But it is stupid. It is a reaction to where society's at because what happens is so many people are doing something they don't enjoy and they're working far too long doing it because in the tribal days, even for people that needed to get their butt into gear to get enough food to survive, they still wouldn't work more than four or five hours a day max. And now that we're working eight hours plus transit, let's just call it 10 to 11 hours a day, on average, some people want more than that. You work in double what we used to. We're sleeping less than what we used to. We get late at night. We have all this unmet need for enjoyment and pleasure and the zest of life. And then instead of being able to have the regulation to find it in a healthy way, we need, like, we're reactively looking for it in short-term hits with short-term gratification. So we're at night eating unhealthy, having a beer, watching Netflix to try to decompress where the actual origin of the problem is not like if you're on a camping trip, you don't feel the need to watch Netflix. Do you? The only reason you're doing is because most people's lifestyles suck. And so the reactive thing to that is at nighttime, instead of winding down and supporting and connecting genuinely and having a beautiful, wholesome time winding down for sleep, we're looking for short-term hits because we didn't have enough pleasure and joy and fulfillment in the day. And that doesn't mean the person's bad. It's just a, it's just an unhealthy spot to get to, but most people in society are already there. So then the phone hooks them, porn hooks them, short-term gratification, any forms, addictive tendencies hook them, right? Coffee, sugar, alcohol, narcotics, cigarettes, uh, there are lots of different ways that people suppress at night. And as a result, you got all this synthetic light as well that does not help our sleep patterns. So then someone's charged up. They find it hard to get to sleep. If you go to a campsite, if you go to a campsite, uh, like a free wilderness campsite, not one of the, the paid ones where there's lighting and electricity and stuff, but just the ones where people pitch a tent, which is the sort of campsites that I, I usually go to. As soon as it gets dark, pretty much, unless you've got a bunch of backpackers that are getting pissed and staying up, everyone else just goes to bed at like 8 p.m. It's dark, they go to bed, and then they're just naturally up super early. That's just what everyone does. And that's what you do when you don't have technology and a laptop or a TV or your phone. That's just what happens. That's just the natural thing. But we're not living in a natural lifestyle. And so we're staying up synthetically way past what we should as a society and then, of course, when we're going to get up early to do the thing that we're not super pumped about the next day, we need an alarm clock to get up. Now, this is, this is what's common, but it sure as hell isn't natural. And it sure as hell is not healthy. And so to get enough sleep, you need eight, nine hours. You just do. And that doesn't mean you have to just teleport to this new... Uh, reality that I'm introducing on this, if this is not already something that you got in your lifestyle. But I highly recommend, if I was coaching you, you were paying me, if you gave me a million dollars to support you for a year, it's not what I charge, but let's just say, you. I just want you to help me so much. 
I'd be like, this is mandatory. I would, uh, all of a sudden, with that level of financial investment that someone gave me, I'd be like, let's quit, quit the games here. You ain't fucking living in a way where you're not getting enough sleep. That is BS. I will not accept it. And I'd get all like super firm about it. But because we're not in that setting, I'm very, I'm a very strong coach, very accountable, blah, blah, blah. When I work with people one to one, but because we're just doing some front end extra wisdom here, you can make your own choices, but please start working towards getting that amount of sleep. That's the first part of this, getting enough sleep.